Tuesday, making New Zealand prime. Rose Turnbull and Julian Thompson are in search of one of the oldest volcanoes in New Zealand. Dating the age at which these granite rocks crystallised will give us an idea about how long New Zealand has been volcanically active and may help us predict future events. Rose, all these rocks, how, how do they get here? What's going on? Well, this entire mountain is made of granite, which used to be a magma chamber, but it's now exposed at the surface. This granite has natural cracks in it. Because we're sitting above the snow line, the snow and the ice gets into those cracks and over time breaks it around them to these boulders that you see littered around the mountaintop. Rose is on a search for rare crystals she hopes will tell her when this extraordinary landscape was formed. This is quite nice to walk on, this soft sand. Yeah, well, it looks a bit like a beach sand, actually. And if you get a bit closer and have a look, you can see that it's sparkling and glinting back at us. What we can actually see are crystals that used to make up the granite Ooh, itself. That's amazing. Look at that crystal face. What Rose is searching for is a little more difficult to find. It's a mineral called zircon. They'll be here, but they're very, very tiny. They're a tenth of a millimetre in size. Right. Could we just take a scoop of this stuff back? Or? There would be zircon crystals in here, but what we really need to do is take a, a sample of the hard rock that hasn't eroded, because then we know that those crystals have come from that piece of rock. The unique geology of the area has created an incredible mountain garden. Lichens, the ground is covered in mosses and lichens. In many places, it creates a thick, soft carpet. These plants are known as golden Spaniards. Despite their hard, needle-like leaves, they're a member of the carrot family. While Rose searches for a suitable rock sample, Julian explores the area. The rocks that we're standing on are the earliest evidence of volcanism in New Zealand. If we go back in our mind's eye to the past, this was hot, liquid rock, deep in the earth, maybe 10 or 15 kilometers below the surface. Incredibly high temperature and under great pressure. And that liquid was rising up, and some of it would have reached the surface and erupted in enormous volcanoes. So when we take samples from these rocks with Rose, we're going to learn even more about the secrets that they're going to reveal. We'll be able to get a really precise date for when these rocks were formed. How'd it get on? Got a nice sample of granite here. Oh, great. Have a look. Yeah. A nice clean face, uh, and uh, you'll think you'll have the zircons that you want in there. Absolutely, yeah. We've got a big enough size here that we should get about a teaspoon of zircon crystals, which is more than right. enough to date it. Right. And so you think that this rock is about a hundred million years old, roughly, yeah. and you'll get it. It will take a, a few million years. Do they go back in time older than that in other rocks? Can you find them? Very the... much older. So the oldest zircon that have been dated are. 4,300 million years old, uh, right. which is only 300 million years younger than the age of the Earth. So almost as old as the Earth. This tells us that these rocks can take us right back to almost the beginning of time. Yeah. Great, isn't it? That's amazing. Building a detailed picture of New Zealand's volcanic past will provide a database to predict future patterns of activity. At the nearby University of Otago, it's time to discover what the crystals from Mount Titiroa can tell us. Rose will be using an instrument called a spectrometer. OK, let's put the sample in. It will identify different chemical elements within the crystal sample. OK, so in my hand, I have a zircon mount. And within this zircon mount, we have several hundred zircon grains. The grains have been separated using a high-powered microscope. A mould has been placed round them and glue poured in. 
the zircon mount is inserted into a machine and a laser fired through it. So now our sample is in the sample chamber. And this here is our zircon grain. So we're going to have a, a zap of that zircon grain. So we're going to put a spot where we're going to fire the laser. The laser extracts a grain of zircon. The sample is then analysed by the spectrometer. So on the screen here, the dark blue line represents the element lead and the light blue line represents the element uranium. And the difference between those tells us that this was crystallising 120 million years ago. For the first time, the Mount Titiroa eruption has been accurately dated. Understanding the history of volcanic activity is a vital tool in the quest to predict future eruptions. Some of New Zealand's volcanoes are dormant, but many are active. Mount Titiroa was formed as New Zealand began to separate from the supercontinent Gondwana. As New Zealand continued east, the Pacific Plate was forced beneath the Australian Plate, melting it. This formed magma, which rose to the surface at multiple points to form active volcanoes beneath the ocean. White Island is located just 48 kilometres off the east coast of the North Island. This relatively youthful volcanic landscape was created over the last 150,000 years. The island is constantly monitored. Frequent eruptions occur. Harmless-looking streams pour down the slopes. In fact, they're streams of sulfuric acid. Two kilometres below the surface is a boiling lake of liquid rock. Superheated steam and poisonous gases such as hydrogen sulphide pour from vents in the ground. Many active volcanoes are hidden deep beneath the waves. White Island offers a unique opportunity to learn what they look like. Beneath the ocean, tectonic plates grind against one another. This geological term